If anything, Vasif Malinga was underrated. He was a nuclear weapon who, even when he delivered poor balls, still no one could hit them. The man was huge, especially at the death. And if we look at him purely by true economy throughout T20 innings in the IPL, there are only five overs where Malinga was better than Jasprit Bumrah. One of them was obviously at the top. You can then see the sixth over and the seventh over. And then there's a couple more scattered throughout here. But there's only five that Malinga is better when we look at purely true economy in the IPL. The other 15 overs, Jasprit Bumrah was more economical than Lasif Malinga. That's 75%. And none of that is doubting that Malinga was a genius. With a physical gift and the combination of these two things meant that facing him was not like any other experience in cricket before. But the truth is that Jasper Bormer is kind of the same. It isn't as noticeable though. But the Indian phenom has incredible advantages over other bowlers. First is his ability to shorten the pitch. Because of his weird action, he delivers the ball closer to batters than most other bowlers ever will. He is essentially playing on a short of wicket, and in some cases around half a meter closer at the release point than other major bowlers. That is a huge advantage. His run-up is also in his favor. Fast bowling is too quick for our reflexes as humans, so what the top batters do is they gather as much information as possible as the bowler is running in. Boomer cuts that down by simply not having a long run-up. Wasim Akram did a very similar thing, although only on occasions. Then there is his accuracy. This is just pure skill, right? We have seen bowlers like Vernon Philander or Mohamed Asif who are more likely to hit the right spot than Bumra. But he isn't accurate on one or two lengths like they are. Every single different variation that he bowls lands right on the spot. He doesn't have a length, he has loads of them. And you can see that he pulls different levers. His back of a length is for dot balls and his length is for wickets. To be honest, that's like most bowlers. He's just a little bit more extreme. But my favorite two sections here are these slot balls. These are the ones that are supposed to get hit everywhere. And even when he finds a mistake and puts the ball in the area where players love to smash the most, he still averages 30 and doesn't go much more than seven runs and over in that last IPL. But you can see if you come down here, we've got the full tosses. I think this is the really, really interesting one. There are a lot of people who still think a low full toss is as good as a decent delivery. It isn't. But anyway, it is very hard to work out. And what we know is this. In general, full tosses are very bad. But not when Jasper Bumrah bowled them in the last APL. His full tosses went at less than a run of ball. Now, I think that's a bit of an outlier. But this is the econ and average for full tosses in the IPL from 2015 onwards. Here's all the normal bowlers going at over two runs a ball and averaging about 40 runs. Here's Lassif Malingo. Couldn't hit his full tosses. His full tosses were absolutely fantastic. But he didn't get many wickets from them. Here's Jasper Bumrah. He's getting wickets at a rate that other bowlers simply do not from full tosses. And he's also still going more than two runs and over left. The truth is that their best ball is better than everyone else's. That's a given. But their worst ball is also better than everyone else's. And that is because they have built up pressure through their skills and physical gifts. But also because they are so hard to hit no matter what they do. When Jasper Bumrah is at his best, you cannot play him. And when he's really, really bad, you still can't. You might want to go on the attack against trolls of your favorite player. But to do that, you need a good defense. And we choose NordVPN. They are our protection against cyber cutters or when some board has geo-blocked a great clip. NordVPN will help you get through the straight bat of any rights restrictions so that you can watch all the cricket you want. Protect your computer like the fastest, nastiest, scariest bowler in the world is coming for it with NordVPN today. That's nordvpn.com forward slash K-I-M-B-E-R. Go Nord today. This is Boomer's pitch map from the last IPL season. And his main spots are quite clearly kind of between the 7 and 9 meter area. We would call that pretty much a normal back of a length. And the thing is that everyone knows he's going to bowl here. He's just so good that he still gets away with it. And of course we all focus on the Yorkers. But this is where he does the bulk of his work. The thing is that this back of a length that he's bowling here. It's not like a magic length he's discovered right. Like a normal bowler will still get scored upon. And how would you score from him from that length? Well, the most obvious shot would probably be the pull shot, right? 
except for the fact that when you try and pull Jasper Bumrah, you average slightly more than 10 in this last IPL. He takes away the most obvious shot to play against him just because some of his balls skid and some of them bounce up. I would go as far to say as last season in the IPL, there was no point even pretending to play a pull shot. But if we look at this incredible year, like what shot should you play? People are averaging around 20 at a runner ball when they're driving him. There literally is no shot that really works or makes any sense at all for him. And there are plenty of players who are very, very good who have just like never worked him out. Glenn Maxwell is an obvious example. And sometimes I wonder if the players with more shots actually have more issues with him. Maxwell, Punt, even Virat Kohli, but certainly Josh Butler and Andre Russell. These are guys with so many options against normal bowlers. And then suddenly they face Jasper Bumrah and they don't have any. But Maxwell is certainly the fun one here because he's still striking pretty well, right? That's a true strike rate of over 40. You would take that against Bulmer any day of the week. The issue is that he doesn't stay in long enough to enjoy that at all. You can find him in here, right? He's basically trying to score off Bulmer really quickly and then going out almost as quickly. But this is a really interesting graphic. If you come up here, you'll have JP Dumini and Manish Pandey. These are two players slightly from another era. So the two most successful players against Bulmerah are from a long time ago and certainly before he was fully formed. But there are a lot of very good players who do okay against him. K.R. Raul, Shikha Darwin, Kane Williamson, David Miller, Ben Stokes, not to mention that obviously Pat Cummins smashed him around at one point. I think the most interesting for me though might be Dinesh Kartik. But the most interesting grouping on here is this big one that all comes together. Partly because of the quality of the batters down here. You have Virat Kohli, David Warner, and Martin Guptill in this group. These are people who try and score from him at a decent rate. And they get away with that part, but they're going out at a ridiculous rate. And then if we come all the way up here, I think there's some interesting players as well. Faf Plessy isn't doing too bad. But what about Ross Taylor? It seems to me that Ross Taylor essentially gave up on trying to score against Jasper Bumrah. That is a remarkable thing to do. But you're probably going to be drawn in by this name, right? Chris Gale, who decided to block Jasper Bumra out. And let's be honest, who can blame him? And there's a very good player down here as well, who is negative on true strike rate, who tried to block him out, but that didn't work. And he was also dismissed all the time. Arise, Gautam Gambia. The point is that you can be a really good player and it doesn't matter. Jasper Bumra can destroy you. But all of this stuff, even if we do have true values versus just raw stats, is fairly easily accessible now. What we wanted to do is take this to a different level. So we got Ashish Ray, who's now working for us, to look up how often a wicket has fallen the ball after a Bumrah wicket. And it turns out in the IPL, he has the second most occasions of that happening behind Sun on Narayan, who has bowled like a billion balls in the IPL. And the reason we just looked at ball one of the following over is because after that, the bowler's natural pressure comes in. But that first ball is quite often brought about because of the pressure of the over before. And Jasper Boomer has got a lot of wickets when another bowler has bowled the following delivery to him. And if you divide this then by the amount of overs that he has bowled, again, he's second on this list. Only Natarajan sees more wickets fall the ball after he finishes his over. So what does this mean, you might be asking? Well, essentially, let's put it this way. He is taking wickets from both ends. You're pretty good if you're not just your own wickets, but you're also someone else's. But because of that, we also wanted to look at economy rate. And this is a really interesting one because we know that Jasper Bormer is going to bowl the 17th over almost all the time, right? And if we know that, teams know that as well. So we wanted to look at the 16th over. And you can see in 2013, in games when Boomer was playing, his team actually had a lower economy on the 16th over than the normal league. Then Boomer starts to take over. And every year after that, you can see here that his team has a higher runs per 16 over than league average. Every time. So the working theory with this is quite clear. That when they know Jasper Boomer is going to come on, they try to slog before he bowls. But we had to be sure. And so that means we actually had to look at the 18th and 19th over as well, because we know he's going to bowl the 19th, so that they should also be attacking the 18th. And you will see every single time except for one, 
there are more runs off the 18th over than his league average. And all of this is important to note. So we can literally see teams attacking the other bowlers because they do not have a choice. They know what is coming. Oh, and one more thing when it comes to the 16th over. Remember, they are not doing this because Boomer has already bowled a great over. They are doing this because they expect Jasper Boomer to bowl a great over. And so when we finally get to the 18th over, they have to attack, even more so in the last couple of years, because they know it is a black hole for the following over. So with this man, you have a bowler who gets wickets at both ends, and you have to attack both sides of him. Jasper Boomer is like a giant bowling magnet, and everything gets warped around him. So much so that in this last IPL, teams just decided there was no point attacking him. They only attacked 37% of his deliveries. He's got to that level as a T20 bowler where it is better to block him than try and score from him. And remember, this is the 2024 IPL that we're talking about. This is the highest scoring franchise league in the history of cricket. And they just went, do you know what, Jasper? You can have your four overs. And there's something else really cool we found in all the data that we picked up about him. This is the economy and average by speed in the latest IPL. You can see he has three different paces that he bowls. This one over here is his slow ball. This is him at top end pace. And this is him just reining himself in. And this is him bowling within himself. So when he bowls very fast, he took a lot of wickets. That's his attacking option. His slow balls go for a few more runs, but still average 20. And there's no huge issue in this tournament. It's still going it under eight and over. But this is the one that I really want to have a look at. Jasper Bormer in this last IPL was at his best when he is not bowling express or slow balls, but then when he is just going within himself. Teams last year in the IPL scored at four runs and over when he wasn't even trying to push himself to his maximum. Let that ruminate just with you for a little bit. Because Boomer is like that scary dude who doesn't even get out of the car to terrify you. Because instead, all he needs to do is drive real slow near someone and they scare themselves. And you also look at this and you start to think to yourself, his best bowling is no longer due to his greatest balls. It's now through the threat of what he can actually do to you. He's dominating T20 batters on a metaphysical level. Jasper Boomer is great, but the threat of Jasper Boomer is almost greater. This World Cup, you can catch us every single day over at Jared Kimber Live. It is like the videos here, except they come out quicker and I forget what I'm saying occasionally. We have sometimes up to three videos a day on that channel, but we usually just have our scoreboard and normal podcasts. But, you know, sometimes when a game is good, I just got to go live. So gorge yourself over at Jared Kimber Live on my, I don't know, liveness?